Hello everyone, uh, I'm Nigel and uh, we're back with another interview and today we have Pablo, he's the founder of Terro Hills Development mm -hmm. and also Maya, she's the sales director for Terro Hills Development and thank you for, for coming here and then You're look welcome. at this thank site, you. it's amazing, right? So we are uh, at location in Lakefront in Toronto. That's right. Toronto, we always thought like only in the city of Toronto, we can build the lane-weight houses, we can uh -huh. build the garden suites. But it turns out it is not. Like, mm -hmm. Through Correct. conversation with Maya, we can actually, like throughout Ontario, we can already build. Correct. So we're going to talk about that as well. So stay tuned. But let's start with Pablo. Like, Can okay. you tell us about your company and, and how long have you in business and stuff like that? Sure. Well, number one, thank you for coming and thank you for giving us an opportunity to talk to your audience. We've been in the business uh, in Ontario since myself, since uh, 1989. So it's this year is going to be about 34 to 35 years. I'm not sure. I kind of lost count. Um, I'm a third generation builder. My father was a builder. So was my grandfather. And uh, we've been uh, building uh, in, in the building industry pretty much in every aspect of it, anywhere from commercial, industrial, hospitality, and of course, uh, residential. We're not condo builders or anything like that, even though we do have uh, a few projects coming up that are uh, basically what we call low rise to mid rise condos. Uh, that's basically anything that's below the eight story mark. Uh, we are not high rise builders uh, like Tradell or anything like that. We have a very, very knowledgeable staff and, and dedicated team. And, and like I said, I mean, our expertise uh, allow us to do projects like the one you just mentioned, like the one behind us right now. Okay, that's great. Yeah. How about you, Maya? Like, uh, how how did you start it with Taro Hill State on? Well, um, so it was actually an interesting story. I uh, I started right after I graduated. I started working at CBRE um, under facilities management, and uh, through my interactions with different general contractors and builders while I was working there, I came to know uh, Pablo. Okay. And uh, ever since then, we have uh, because we actually had a lot of. Um, shared and common goals uh, as to what we want to accomplish. And that's basically how we got started working together. So yeah, time flies. I mean, it's been 10 years already. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. So, so Pablo, uh, be, be, like before we started, like when uh -huh. we just got here, you were telling me about like how challenging this project is. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about this project? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it'll be my pleasure. Uh, so obviously, as you could see, um, um, and I'm not sure if, if if the camera can actually grasp grasp the depth of this, uh, this is actually a single family residential home. Uh, however, it's being built more like a like a small condominium. We have shoring behind the uh, right now. We're working on the foundation walls. Uh, the footings uh, are mostly done, but as you can see, half of it is being done and the other half is not. If we're actually standing in an area right here, which actually from everywhere from the concrete side over, this is basically the backyard. This is what we call the landscaping area. And the reason why we had to do it in this manner is because if you look, we're literally tied side to side on the side. This is basically what we call uh, a site with no hoarding space or not access. Basically where our footprint is basically completely uh, enveloping the, the site, which basically means that we cannot constantly be moving back and forth. So we had to finish a particular area, okay. then move over to a second area, then move over to a third area. Now, obviously that requires very, very, very skilled management, but also it requires uh, uh, a knowledge of putting things together while they're being separated, because at the end of the day, this will still be a single family dwelling. So it's been challenging, for example, uh, by the amount of engineering that went into this. Uh, I believe if I remember correctly, uh, just on the rebar alone, we have over 30 tons of rebar. Uh, we've pulled out over 250 truckloads of, of uh, uh, soil, dirt uh, from here, and we're still not done. Uh, there's going to be an indoor swimming pool here. Uh, this is a very high tech type of home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be fully smart systems. Uh, for example, over here, just to give you an idea, this is a toy garage for water toys and beach toys and we have outdoor showers and we have outdoor fireplaces so there's Alley a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff that's going on right now that needs to go below grade underground 
Um, and um, this is something that, for example, even myself, even at 10 years of being building, I would not have been able to take onto something like this. It's a strong collaboration between the engineering teams and, and the management teams and, and the guys that are working. They have to be uh, extremely professional, still the people who've done this before. As a matter of fact, the guys that we have forming and important right now, these are guys that usually work on condo projects. Right. Um, and, and that's actually one of the things that we always talk about with our team is there are, there is a time and a place for saving money when it comes to a house this is not it we always tell people this is this is where you need to put all your eggs because kitchens you can always renovate you can always change uh, bathrooms you can always renovate and change but your structure i mean as you can see this is mostly sand if you see that post down the middle there that's called a helical pile so the whole foundation and footing on these things is sitting on piles that have been screwed into the ground right. about 40 feet deep they're called helical so and so the whole thing, we have over 120 piles through the whole place. So the whole place is literally being held by those piles. So the reason why is because obviously we're sitting on sand. Uh, sand can be very compact when it's being pushed on, but it can also wash out very easily as well if you have underground water. So we have drainages, we have uh, sump pumps. There's, it just makes it complicated because there's just so many things to do. Right just before you put your foundation up. So we haven't even started in reality. And this has already been about seven months of work and we're not even done with the foundation yet. And it's, believe it or not, it's not a slow process. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why this is a very challenging process, which is one of the main reasons why we keep pushing so heavy into modularization, which is yeah. what we're going to talk about yes. a little bit later yeah, on. So yes. I was going to ask you about that because yeah. your portfolio is huge, right? Yeah. From like mid-rise to, to a custom project like yes. this. Highly challenging, yes, and lots of expertise needs to go into a project correct. like this. Correct, correct. And and then you also have another division called Epic Mod. That's correct, right? which is modular housing. Correct, relatively easier to build. Correct. Can you speak more to that? Yeah, actually, because um, I've been doing this for over three decades now. Um, one of the biggest issues that we have in the building industry today, and you can talk to pretty much any builder across the board, will tell you the same thing. It's, it's a massive lack of skilled labor. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's absolutely a, a, a very good reason for that. I mean, there's so many jobs in tech, there's jobs in, in, in different industries right now that are significantly easier to deal with and manage. I mean, not everybody's cut up to be working, you know, in minus 20 degree weather when it's right. blizzard outside. Uh, uh, people don't want to do that. And, you know, they go and they get an education and they end up working in different fields. Now, that puts a strain on actual skilled labor. So you're a builder and you're saying, okay, well, you know, for example, I'm doing this and then after this, I'm going to start framing. And if I can't find framers or if I can't find the proper framers for something like this, then that's where trouble usually begins. So uh, obviously uh, even the unions are, are, are fully, um, fully packed. I mean, there's fully scheduled, uh, very, very hard. So the next logical move was to say, well, what if we could take what is being done outside and bring it into a controlled environment where with some tech and machinery and perhaps slightly less skilled labor, knowledgeable but not skilled to the point where they need to be on site, we can produce the same, again, in a controlled environment with heat and with uh, air conditioning in the summer, uh, where we can actually control the, the, the state of the lumber that comes in. Everybody has driven by a construction job site and have seen piles and piles of lumber sitting outside. That lumber is going to be inside your walls at some point. Right. And it's been sitting outside in the weather and the, the rain and the heat. Mm -hmm. So what it's going to do, it's going to start working inside your walls that starts to dry. And that's why people sometimes see wavy walls and walls that are popping and screws that are coming out of the wall, that does not happen in a controlled environment. In a controlled environment, you can bring in your material, you can properly uh, call it, say, okay, well, this is good material, this is not good material, the material that's not good can be returned and exchanged. And now you're building, for example, imagine, just, I, I, I oversimplify it, but imagine it's being built on, on what it's essentially a table. You're working at table height. So now when your guys are working at table height, instead of hanging on a rafter and, you know, 30 feet up on a roof, you can actually be significantly more, um, you can take your time, you can do it straight, you can actually see. So it started with panelization. Panelization is basically taking walls apart, 
taking walls aside, taking the whole house, breaking it into pieces, breaking it into walls, mm -hmm. and then actually bringing it into site and installing it. So panelization is literally just the construction of a house and then the reconstruction of a house. And from there, which is where we want to head forward, is full modularization, which is literally building the full rooms on, on a controlled environment and be able to bring it onto site and crane them into site and hoist them into site. So that's literally the main difference is obviously here, everything is being done on site. You're exposed to the elements, you're, you know, obviously foundations will still have to be done this way, but after foundations are done, the, the majority of the uh, the rest of the house could actually be done in a controlled environment and brought it. That's, that's great. I still remember how we started the, the conversation is, mm -hmm. uh, I thought that we can only do that, like building coach houses uh -huh. uh, in Toronto. Yes. Right? They have the garden suite, yes. you know, all those policies and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. With my conversation with Maya, she yes. told me that we can actually start doing that all over Ontario. That's Correct. Right. And, right. and that really piqued my interest because Correct. I have a pretty big backyard. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I can build something to to generate income, I think that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Or, you know, Correct. Yeah, oh no, and sure. that makes perfect sense. I mean, Maya can speak about, for example, I mean, we're in Toronto right now and yeah. you guys are on the real estate side. You guys can both speak about how much it costs right now to purchase a condo unit anywhere exactly. in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, right. I believe they're over the thousand square, uh, a thousand well, dollars per square way, foot mark, maybe 1200 to yeah. Probably like 15, yeah. anywhere exactly. between 15 to $1,800 yeah. yeah. per square foot right now. Exactly. Yeah. So what that, so what we did is we said, okay, well now that the whole of Ontario is allowed to do this. And of course there is bylaws that we have to follow. Yeah. Uh, Three very important things that have actually come out to this that allows us to move forward in, in a significantly faster manner. And, and, in, and in my opinion, it's it's a huge, it's a game changer a little bit. As long as you comply with the setbacks, so if your yard is big enough to comply with the setbacks and big enough is, is a loosely used term because I'm going to explain why, because obviously there's different size coach houses, so we can somewhat accommodate there are some places that unfortunately cannot mm -hmm. but we can accommodate so as long as your setbacks comply they have taken out committee of adjustments you no longer have to go to committee of adjustments yeah. literally you just get your engineering done and you get your permitting done and you can get your coach house installed now what that means basically is two things that are huge number one ease of build ease of permitting for example in our particular case we sell a full engineering package that is done to compliance with you know part nine of the ontario building code which um which is extremely important a lot of people say well you know how do you compare to houses that are being bought from the outside or being brought in from overseas it's a huge difference because yeah. if they're not compliant to part uh, nine of the building code then in reality you're not supposed to live in them because if you do a right. knock on wood anything happens you the, the homeowner the person who actually installed it it's a hundred percent liable for it any damages that might happen to that property. So number one. Number two, um, this house is literally now, or this coach house or this uh, IDU, the secondary unit, is attached to your main structure. So it's actually part of your already existing home. Okay. So imagine if I'm bringing something in that is attached to your existing home and I'm building more value into your home, now your equity increases Increases because sure. it's your own home. For sure. But if you can get into, for example, 275 to $325 square foot compared to the 1500 square foot, right. and you can be up and running significantly faster, but also you have full control of it because it's in your backyard, that's where it starts to, to make a, a significant difference. But also if, for example, you have equity in your own property as it sits right now, you can potentially borrow up against your mortgage in order to uh, get these things done. We actually deal with some people that do financing for these things as well. So it's a much, much easier way of creating income. As a matter of fact, and it's not just a coach housing, it has uh, the, the, the bylaw basically says that, or, or the new rules basically say that you can have up to three units mm -hmm. in a single family unit. So now, for example, if you have a basement apartment yeah. that can be legal, your coach house can be, uh, can be legal and then your main residence can be legal and it's all part of the same complex, the same address. And now you're actually now making income. So uh, we've run the numbers and I don't, I'm not going to bore you through the numbers, but we believe that uh, uh, when it comes to cap rate, it's we're, we're over 8 to 10 percent, 8 to 10 percent, yeah. which That's is crazy. you can't get crazy. that anywhere right That's now with any to, type of investment. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It, oh, it's, it's better than anything the bank can give you. But on top yeah. of that. That's why we figure this is the right time to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're putting a significant investment in it into new machinery, new equipment, and we want to make sure that what we build, uh, and this is actually one thing that your viewers might want to be very much aware of, a coach house or a garden suite or, or a lane house, whatever you want to call it, 
is no different than what you're seeing behind me. It is actually still part of the uh, Ontario Building Code and it's part nine of the Building Code, which is basically residential, and you have to comply with everything. So yeah. when people say, well, what's the difference between this and my main house? I said, size, yeah. Yeah. literally. Yeah. But you're building it exactly the same way. You have to have your HVAC, you have to have okay. your electrical, you have to have your foundation, you have to have your engineering. So yeah. Sorry, actually on yeah. that note, because I just wanted to add to that, yeah. right? Because I've, I've been talking to a lot of people about coach houses. Right. Mm -hmm. I see a very, very common misconception because a lot of people don't really know mm -hmm. about yeah. the fact that there is the, such thing as a coach house. Right. They confuse it with a tiny home or an RV type of, uh -huh. you know, movable structure. Uh -huh. So, right. and because especially when I tell them that we manufacture and we, we produce these coach houses modularly, uh -huh. they think it's a prefabricated home. Uh -huh. But in reality, the difference is that coach houses are actually legal dwellings that are permanently fixed to the ground, okay. which yeah. basically means you need to have a foundation, you yeah. need to have all the structures that you see here in order to qualify it as a permanent yeah. dwelling unit. Whereas, for example, if you look at a tiny home that is on wheels, right? If it's actually a movable, towable structure, yeah. it is not, it's not, first of all, it does not comply with OBC. Right. And second of all, it's not a, it's not a permanent structure. Right. So you cannot use that and claim that it's a uh, secondary structure. So you cannot be, ex be parking one of those yes. structures on your lot and it claim that it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. legal to do that. So, okay. but yeah. I think, I think the biggest yeah. difference, and, and thank you for that. That makes, no that's a really valid point. The biggest difference is that we still have to have the city come in and, and inspect, inspect it. Yeah. Of so yeah. it goes through full inspection cycle and it would have to also have a final inspection, which basically is an occupancy certificate yeah. uh, that the city will provide you once the dwelling is completed oh, in order for great. you to legally start occupy. legally occupying the yeah. unit. Okay. Now, what that does is also is now you can now insure it. And that's a lot of people say, well, what, why is that? important well it's important for many reasons on a coach house coach houses and laneway houses do not have separate connections they're connected to your main dwelling right so if there is some kind of let's say electrical fire flood sewer issues gas issues it may affect the main property as well so in obviously in order to be insured for your own property knock on wood if anything happens you need to insure the other side all the accessory um, structures associated exactly yeah. now because it's done by the book and it's done with inspections it can also be mortgaged right. and that's a humongous difference so yeah. now you can go to your mortgage provider you can go to your your bank or whatever and you can add it to your mortgage uh, because it's actually a legit and a legal uh, structure and mm -hmm. that's the most important thing so it doesn't matter who builds it as long as it complies and that's usually the biggest issue, right? Now, the reason why we're able to do it at a very good rate and we're able to comply is because it is not our main business. So we really, really try to push the affordable housing. Uh, and again, when I say affordable housing, sometimes that sounds like a, like a, like a bad word, but in reality, affordable housing is needed right now, sure. not because yeah. people, are, people don't make enough money, it's because regular structures or regular houses are no longer affordable, yeah. you know, pretty much for the majority of the population. So this, if this can actually help with subsidizing their mortgage payments or their bills, and they still have plenty of control. Imagine kids uh, coming out of college that might not be able to afford to put their first down payment. One of the things that we, a main catalyst to push this forward was the fact that, for example, we lost that starting step or stepping stone to home ownership in Ontario. Yeah. Before it used to be that, okay, I can move into a little condo, condos are cheap. After being there for a few years, then I can move into a little townhouse and eventually I can move into a single. Condos now at $1,500 a square foot are no longer that starting step, if anything, sometimes. Sure. Yeah. So what happens? People now uh, through the economy that we have are working at home. They're no longer going to the office so much. So the downtown scene is not exactly as needed as it used to be. And now these condos are completely overpriced and they're not very good for return and investments even as an investor if you think about it you know if, if you if you pick up a unit that is two hundred thousand dollars compared to a, a, a 1.5 million dollar uh, condo unit that you know that two hundred thousand dollar unit is almost the same size if not a little bit bigger but much cheaper significantly cheaper you can yeah. buy five for the price of one so that's yeah. a huge difference so as an investor uh, it's it's uh, extremely profitable as a homeowner it can help you with uh, basically, uh, um, the payment structure of your of your existing mortgage it can help you cut down some costs. It can give you a little bit of cash flow, but you can also help, for example, a, uh, an elderly parent that might need a secondary home. You know what I mean? It, it, you can bring the family together and, and do a little bit better. So this is why we said, you know what? This is time for us as a company 
to put some money down and to try to help and see what, how much we can do and what, you know, what, uh, what we can bring to the table in order to help. Absolutely. I think it's a game changer. I yeah. think if, if anything has been done, I think it's probably one of the most significant changes that I've seen in the last 30 years yeah. when it comes to housing. And I think it's going to make a humongous difference. Uh, and I think people, um, again, because it's, it's done by the book and it's done with permitting and it's done with all that, it takes time. So if somebody is looking to do something like that, uh, they would contact somebody like you who yeah. can contact somebody like us and, and plan it properly. Uh, it, it does take time to get it going. So I would say from start to finish, from the time you decide to do something till the time you are literally done, you're probably still looking at anywhere between eight months to a year. Although the difference is that, for example, this house will take about one, 1. 1.9, almost two years to complete. Yeah. And a coach house probably take eight to 10 weeks. Yeah. So that's, that's the difference, right? So, well, yeah. I, I think you bring up a very good point from yeah. an investment perspective. Yes. Let's say I have some money to invest. Yes. Right? Like I have enough down payment for mm -hmm. a condo, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? This is a alternative. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. That's that, right. Uh, this addition to your home is also able to get a mortgage. Absolutely. It, it will get financed. Absolutely. Uh, it adds value to my home. Yes. I don't have to pay any condo fees. That's Correct. right. Right? Exactly. And in the, at the same time, I, I'm in full control of the whole process. Absolutely. Right? I have a professional like you guys. Absolutely. To make sure that everything is done it's properly. It's done for properly, correct. Right? So And speed to market is a lot faster. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. You don't have to wait till for, 2025. That's right. Correct. For occupancy and, yeah, or, exactly. or anything like that. Yeah. And I think another thing is once the it's completed and once you have your occupancy certificate, now you can get a reappraisal of your property. Yeah. And because it's been done by licensed professionals, at the very least, you'll gain what you've spent. At yeah. the very least. We've never seen it like that. We usually it's usually significantly more than that. Yeah. So it's something that gives you equity almost instantly. Yeah. So that is literally a trifecta of investing in real estate. If yeah. you can get if you can buy in law, I always tell you, it doesn't matter what market you're in, you buy law, you try to come out high. Um, if you come in with a low investment, you can get something that you can control. And you can actually get your returns. You can see your returns practically with the cash flow almost immediately. But on top of that, your equity level rises. In my opinion, it's a win-win. Yeah, for so, sure, 100%. Yeah. I think a lot of people would have questions about like, mm -hmm. the, the approval process. Yes. Right? Like, um, like, let's say I'm interested, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how would that process look like? Is there any guidance from you guys that can guide yes. us through in terms of like how we can get the permit, stuff like that? Very good question. Do you want to take it? Sure, or? no problem. Yeah, so actually as part of our offering, we, we do um, take care of everything from start to finish, right? Amazing. Now, we, we make it in a way that is easy to understand yeah. and also in a modularized fashion, you know, from a process perspective, is that we, we break it down into separate components. So the first first component when it comes to getting a coach house done is the engineering and permitting package. Right. So in that package, we actually help the client, uh, you know, not only get their engineering drawings, yeah. but also get it permitted by the city, right, all the way through. So once the permit is in, once the permit is issued by the city or the municipality that they're in, then at that point, we move on to the construction package, right? right? And that's basically where our package pricing comes in. For, for construction. So, so that would ensure that at the end of the package, not, not only do you get a full construction cleaning, you get the uh, occupancy inspection passed, uh, but you also get, you know, turnkey, basically. You, yeah. you can move in right away okay, from that point on. Leads to another very common question. Right. Yes. So the pricing. The yes. pricing, right? yeah. So how would the pricing structure look like? That's, in, uh... that's a good question. <laughs> uh, we have actually, we have units. Uh, one thing that uh, uh, Maya just forgot to mention there is that yeah. the first thing that we do is we take a look at your property and we help you pick the right suit for your property and right. for what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most important thing. For example, if you're saying, look, I, I want this investment, I want to rent it out and I want to get you know, the biggest bang for my buck. But I, for example, let's just say I also need a garage. Yeah. If we have the right height and the right room, we could do, for example, garage on the main floor and a coach house at the top. Mm -hmm. If not, if you already have a garage and say, no, I want the whole thing to be, you know, a two-story coach house because I want to put, you know, a, um, a family of, you know, three people there, you know, maybe uh, two parents with a child or two children and I have the right room. So we'll first, we'll help you pick the right structure for your property. Yeah. After that, like I said, uh, we go through uh, through the permitting process, through, the, through everything else until finished construction. But we have units that start 
at the low 100s, like $110,000, I think it's the first yeah, one. Yeah. And actually one of the most expensive ones, yeah. which is pushing 1,100 square feet, it's around $350,000. Yeah. So and that's, that's literally a, a house. It's right. a small house. Yeah. Now, one thing that we don't do, for example, is basements. Obviously with coach houses, yeah. we don't do basements. Uh, we like to use helical pile technology because we believe it's, it's the best thing to do. So we would do a package with helical, and, and that is everything that's included, by the way. The only thing that is separate is the engineering package. Mm -hmm. So once we put the engineering package, because again, based on the size of the property, the engineering package differs in price, right? If it's the smallest one we have, obviously the engineering package is going to be significantly cheaper than if it's the biggest one that we have. But again, we have pretty much for every budget. Uh, and just to give you an idea, for example, the smallest one is 276 square feet and it's a full bachelor. Uh, we don't use anything cheap. Everything that we have inside is made to last a very, very long time, like the freestanding showers, the cabinetry, cabinetry that we put in is custom cabinetry, um, soft closing hinges everywhere. Uh, we do not, it, it depends. I mean, we ask the client, we can supply a, an appliance package or not. A lot of the clients sometimes say, listen, you know, I have appliances that are still in good condition. I want to use those so we can customize it around that. But if not, we can supply with that as well. So literally we can go, we can be as involved or as hands-off as the client wants. Uh, some clients has also said, hey, listen, what if you guys bring it, to, let's say, finished drywall, final inspection, and I'll do the painting. And I'll, we, we have, uh, and we're even working right now for people who have a little bit more experience or might potentially be able to finish stuff up. We even have kits. just framing kits alone. Yeah. So you could just buy, we'll drop off the framing kit, you could literally just put it up between yourself and, and, and a couple of buddies if you have a, a, a little bit of uh, construction experience. It's literally like putting together Legos. It's very, very simple. Um, so we, we're working on that as well. So we, we're trying to give people turnkey all the way up to just framing packages alone. Yeah. So there's literally pretty much a coach for anyone who wants one. Yeah. This, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, like, like to me, it's, it's mind-blowing because it's a completely new option. Yes. For me, let's say I have some money I want to invest. Yeah. Instead of buying like a condo or like like uh, something that is a lot more expensive, this adds to my value mm -hmm. of 100%. my home. Yeah. It's easier for me to manage too, yes. because yes. it's right at my background. Yes, hundred yes. percent. Sure. One question I have is like I, I know this model is quite common in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Sure. But in Vancouver you have to have a laneway. Laneway, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. In Ontario, you don't have to. Right? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. as long as you have the enough space, enough Correct. clearance, yeah. you Correct. can do it. That's yeah. Right. And also, like I said, uh, we do offer to people uh, what we call a, I guess you can call it a pre-construction package or that uh, basically, um, I think it's, if I don't. Sorry, which one? Uh, the five hundred ninety nine dollar package. Oh, that's the development potential report. The development report. potential packet uh, yeah. report that we have. Yeah. Now it's it's five hundred ninety nine dollars. But what we do is we uh, and trust me, we don't we don't make anything on that because it takes what? days and days and days to find out. That's basically specifically to your address. So we go, um, we say, okay, this is where you live. Um, we'll do all the due we'll diligence. We'll do all the due diligence with the city. We find out absolutely everything and we'll give you a report with maximum potential of what can be built in your property. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my opinion, before you spend a hundred grand, spend 600, mm -hmm. right? $600. To find out so what you can So find do. out what you can, cannot do. That's a certified thing. We have our, one of our engineers or one of the uh, code uh, specialists that we have in our, in our office do it. it. It's a very comprehensive package, sometimes anywhere between 20 to 60 pages long. Uh, but it tells you exactly what can be done in your property, yes. not in your neighbor's property, not across the street. Uh, what can you comply with? Uh, for example, we found out in one of the projects that we were doing in, in, in Aurora, for example, to give you an idea, yeah. they had a pretty standard backyard. It was only like 60 wide. Uh, it was a side yard more than a backyard, 60 wide by 60 deep. And they were able to put in a 1,200 square foot coach house. It's so bigger than literally their house. it's bigger than their main <laughs> house and it's a two story coach yeah. house which and they and they live in a bungalow. Yeah. So if we could find out for you okay you could do this and you could do that you know what a lot of people have even actually moved into the coach houses and rented their main house because yeah, the coach really? houses yeah. yes exactly. Wow. So again there, there is all kinds of obviously based on what your what your needs are for example but if you have a, a retiring couple that doesn't want to leave their house and they say you know what this house is you know three bedroom or four bedroom three bathrooms i don't have any more kids living at home you know i build a coach house in the back i have a nice little coach house in there that is my own i can rent the main the main building for a significantly more money i mean it, if if you're subsidizing your retirement income with something like that if you no longer have a mortgage and you're only a couple of hundred thousand dollars in now in my opinion is 
it's a fantastic way of, of actually helping people retire. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of having to be 80 years old and having to work at Walmart, which is, you know, it's, it's sad, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, after a lifetime of work. You know, it's funny so, because I yeah. was telling my friend about it. Yeah. And I was saying, hey, I can build this and then I can get my kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then my friend told me, maybe you'll get kicked out. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably, it's probably more likely for that to happen. Yeah. So that, that could yeah. be a scenario. Yeah. So yeah. this is absolutely very amazing project yeah. that you guys are working on. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, like, uh, in, in terms of future projects, I yes. mean, you guys do a lot of like really exciting stuff. Yeah. What's next for you guys? Uh, there's a lot on the drawing board. We have um, one of our own projects um, that's our own piece of land in, in the town of Brecon, pretty close to a Casinorama or close to, um, I guess you can call it uh, Lagoon City, right across the street from Lagoon City, which is one of the nicest places in, in, in Lake Simcoe. Uh, we have 165,000 square foot total uh, industrial park yeah. that we're building. Uh, potentially, um, that might potentially grow, uh, but for now, um, that's what we're that's what we're doing in that particular project. And we have a couple of other projects that are coming up: potential condo project, eight-story condo in Whitby. in Whitby area, in the Whitby area. And we have a, we're in talks right now to uh, to develop a very very high-end, a long-term care facility in Mississauga, also eight stories high, with a church component. Yeah, with a church component to yeah. it. It's actually a church yeah. group yeah. that is looking so into it's building. By a church it's group? church by a ch by a church group. Yeah. Uh, if we manage to. Um, to negotiate through that, in my opinion, that is probably going to be, bar none, one of the top uh, long-term care facilities in Canada. Luxury long-term uh, care. Luxury facility. lines. Yeah. I mean, the, it, it's a beautiful. I don't want to give too much away because mm. yeah. we're still uh, we're still in the contract and we still have uh, clauses that we we can't talk to me too much about things. We have that coming up, and of course, we have our own projects that are you know we, we're constantly doing as well. We have a couple of clients uh, for for custom home building. Now, uh, for custom home building, we'll talk to pretty much everyone. It doesn't mean we take every project. There are some projects that we take and there are some projects that we don't. And I'm going to tell you, we're not necessarily the cheapest, but also we're not the most expensive. We're very competitive for what we offer. And um, and again, if there's nothing we can't do, we have licenses for pretty much everything. If any of your, your viewers or, or whatever has any questions, we're more than happy to, to answer them for them. Yeah. We have no issue with that. We usually have, especially if they're uh, if they're sent by either you or, or anybody else, we have no problem giving them a, um, a one hour consultation, you know, at no charge. Uh, we, we like to, we like to educate people. I think, I think I, I was mentioning this to you earlier before we, we started uh, the interview. The more people know, the more people, the more people understand, yeah. the more they know how to, how to make their decision, like how to make an educated decision. Sure. And that's sometimes a huge detriment, especially here. I always tell people the building industry is a very lucrative industry, but it could also sink you very quickly mm -hmm. because the values that you play with here are very large. Right. So if you are thinking about building something, whether it's, you know, uh, a small 3,000 square foot custom home or, or a massive 12,000 square foot, uh, foot home like this one, consult with a professional. Take For your sure. time, uh, do a little bit of research, it might cost you a little bit of money. That's fine. I always said, you know what? Nothing that is good comes for free. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you want to become a doctor, not only do you have to pay for university, but you have to swallow eight to 10 years worth of education and, and internships and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, the, the doctor part is the last part, right? Like that's what everybody sees. But so educate yourself, inform yourself. I think what you guys are doing with your, uh, with your videos and informing people is vital. Yeah. I think we live in an information age right now where people have a lot of access to good information. Um, we do not uh, give people false information, whether they like what we have to say or not, it's irrelevant. I think that's important. Uh, so basically, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes there are people who tell you what you want to hear. That's not always the case. Find somebody who tells you what you really need to know. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, like I said, with what your guys are doing, uh, with I think what you're offering your audience is is priceless, in my opinion. I think people should, I don't know how many people you have looking at your videos, but you should have tens of thousands because I think if that's the case, people would know better. And I think we would live in a better economy, to be honest with you. Yeah. So other than that, I'm glad I, you know, we could we could help and hopefully it was informative enough for you guys. That's as well. great. So, yeah. so Maya, let's say if we want to find out more about uh, the portfolio of the homes that you guys have built yeah. and more information on the Epic Mart, where can we find that information? 
Yeah, actually, you know what? We have uh, quite a few of our sample projects on our website. Okay. So you can definitely go on uh, Terra Hills. So www.terrahillsdevelopments.com. Okay. You're going to be able to find some sample pictures of the projects we've done in the past, awesome. both on the residential and commercial side. Okay. And, we don't keep uh, everything there because yeah, it's not possible. Just, we try to yeah, we'll just update like it every couple of the, years. The, the, yeah. the better looking ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and um, when it comes to Epic Mod, we do have a separate website for that as well. Yeah. And it's very simple. It's Epic Mod. .ca. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we are still working on that because yeah. we're actually not officially launching till um, until April, April or May this year. Yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah. okay. but we, uh, again, um, this is the perfect time to talk to us because uh, we have been getting a lot of people inquiring into this. I mean, we've done a little sure. bit. We've done just a very just just to kind of like test the waters, a little bit of advertising, mm -hmm. uh, especially on Google and stuff like that. And and the interest is huge. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, we will not be launching until April or May. It, I mean, I'm still waiting on equipment that's it's being custom made in the U.S. and so on and so forth. So, um, but we're hoping to be fully operational by the summer. Uh, but if you are looking to do something, for example, let's say late next year, like let's say anywhere between July and September, you should be contacting us as soon as possible because it does take time to get through the process. Yeah. So, because if not, you're literally going to be either super, super late in the year or early 2025 yeah. now, right? So it, it does take time to, to get through that. And we are only, I think this year, if we're going to be operational in May, we're probably only going to be probably building anywhere between maybe 40 to 50 coach houses just for 2024. 2024. And uh, we plan to be in full production anywhere between 200 to 250 units for 2025. That's amazing. So, yeah. All right. Um, well, really want to thank Maya and Pablo for your time. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. I, I think this new product that you guys are offering is a game changer and definitely we will try to let as many people know about this as possible mm -hmm. because I, I think it's a great option for mm -hmm. a lot of us. Oh, so agree. thank you for your time and thank you for staying with us throughout the video. <laughs> and if you guys want to be informed on all the real estate and content, subscribe so that you don't miss out. All right, thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pablo. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and don't forget to follow me on all my social media. Subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming listings.